So the title of my uh, presentation is Raising a Coder in an Educational Maelstrom, Advice and Lessons Learned. So hi, I'm Seth Thompson. I'm the Chief Information Officer at DRW, a technology-driven principal trading firm uh, here in Chicago, where I manage many technology and non-technology teams. I've been there 12 years, and I've been in IT finance in Chicago for 21 years. Uh, I'm a married man. Uh, I've got two kids, Aiden, who's 13, and Isabel, who's 10, both of whom uh, have done some coding, and one of whom is doing a lot of coding. Uh, I'm really passionate about technology education for kids, as well, mine and others, as well as veterans. I'm on the uh, board of Code Platoon, a Chicago-based not-for-profit that teaches military veterans how to code using a developer boot camp model and then places them in paid internships. Um, and then the uh, sponsors can choose whether they take them on. Uh, DRW, we've hired five of the six interns we've had, and it's gone really well. And uh, the, the graduates from Code Platoon are doing really well on average. Um, I joined the board last year. And I'm also passionate about training my employees and having them not become dinosaurs as technology changes. So I worked with a guy that a lot of you probably know named Dan North, who uh, on an agile transformation five or six years ago, and it resulted in lots of good process change as well as a lot of engineers learning how to code primarily in Python. So I'm gonna talk about three topics. Kids needing better coding education, my experiences with my own children, and some others, and recommendations for all of you. So why should we teach kids how to code? And I'm gonna ask this question in two different ways. Um, so one is the job market. And Jill referred to it a bit, you know, that we're not filling our open positions. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 2018 median pay for software developers was $105,590 per year, $50.77 per hour. The U.S. had 1.256 million jobs open in the field in 2016, and the job growth rate was projected from 2016 to 2026 to be 24 percent, much faster than the average. This is not a surprise, I'm sure, to anyone in this room. We're not teaching our kids how to use the tools that can change their worlds. I'm seeing Code Platoon graduates finding jobs left and right. My company, DRW, has many software engineering jobs open now and has had software engineering jobs open the entire 12 years I've been there. This is not an aberration. This is what's happening. I can't think of a time where this was more of an important topic. Uh, kids learn life skills with coding. They learn logical thinking skills, creativity, persistence, resilience, communication, structural thinking, problem solving, math skills, and sometimes they learn how to teach others. And I'm gonna ask the question again, why should we teach kids how to code? And by we, I mean us, um, because there's a lack of good standardized programs. There's a lack of, uh, many schools don't have a technology education program at the elementary level, and sometimes at the high school level. There is frequently in the U.S. very little uh, state, statewide programs or even district-wide programs. It all tends to be very a la carte. And I think that, you know, as the United States compared to some of the other countries, if we're playing this game as a strategy game, we're losing. So before you start, this is a import really important topic because there's this, you know, this meme that goes around that everyone should just teach everyone how to code, everyone should learn how to code. It's not necessarily that easy. First, you have to have basic education in place. Without some basic reading, math, and computer skills, it can be very frustrating or impossible for a kid to learn how to code. Second, you need a support system at home. Your home life has to support the kids learning. They'll need time and ability to focus. They'll need parents that are interested in what they're doing. Uh, this is generally not something you can just throw over the wall to your kid. You'll need gear. You'll need a computer, usually, and internet access. Maybe some headphones in case it's too loud or the, the kid has trouble focusing. And finally, you need to understand your kid. Different kids learn different ways and, in different, and they want to learn different things. My son loves to code and design levels for video games and apps. My daughter, Izzy, who's pictured, prefers music and digital art to coding. 
and she's taking an anime course on Udemy right now. She told me that she only likes coding when it results in the creation of digital assets. That's, that's something my 10-year-old said to me today. She's like, make sure you say that. My son is goal-oriented and time-driven, but my daughter prefers less rigid schedules, and some kids might not be interested in the topic at all. I, I've seen this happen, where if you force coding down your kid's throat, it's unlikely they'll stick with it, like any other topic. So understand your kid. So meet Aiden. Aiden uh, is my son, who is uh, 13 and a half now. Uh, he's been coding since he was seven years old. His fifth grade declaration, in fifth grade, they had a thing where they brought all the kids up for the graduation, and uh, the kids said things like, I want to be nice to animals, or I want to be a doctor. And he said, I'm going to write software for machines that change the world, which obviously surprised and delighted me. Um, he's an app developer. He published his first app on the Apple App Store, Eternal Story, last year. He was featured in Waters, Technolo an, Waters Technology article last year, the same year I was on the cover. Talk about working to take down your dad, um, which I guess is also natural at 13. Um, he's a first LEGO League programmer. He's the main, uh, main coder on the team, the lead coder on the team. I've been coaching a team of 10 children for three years in first LEGO League, which I'll go into. Um, this year, we won the regionals, we made it to the state championship where we won two awards, and then we're invited to an international invitational in Izmir, Turkey uh, next month. So I'll be going with half the teams and parents to Izmir and competing with 100 different teams from 70 different countries. And it's going to be an adventure. Uh, Aiden wrote his app in C Sharp using Unity. Uh, I'll go into how that happened in this talk. And he's learning C++ with the Unreal Engine right now, also using a Udemy course. So how did it all begin? Well, we started with Scratch. Actually, it's a lie. We started with gaming. So uh, when he was three and a half, I thought he was old enough to start playing some video games with dad. And we started playing this game called Endless Ocean on the Wii, which you basically, like, swim around and, and, and meet fish and learn some things, and there's no violence, so that passed muster with my wife, and we were able to play games together. Then, later on, we moved on to Minecraft with us on the tablet, on the iPad, and I quickly realized I was doing him a disservice and moved him straight to our land so we could get some hands-on keyboard. And then uh, we also played Robot Turtles, which is an awesome board game for teaching kids how to code, um, it introduced some basic coding concepts. I helped kickstart it uh, a few years ago. I highly recommend picking it up, especially for younger kids. All right, back to Scratch. We did actually, we did actually get into Scratch. Um, I saw that he loved video games, and uh, I found a book called Super Scratch Programming Adventures uh, that looked like a good book for teaching him how to do some basic coding. Uh, I went through chapter one with him, and then he got it right away, and I said, do you want to take yourself through the rest of the book? He said, yeah. So every time he'd finish a chapter, I introduced an inter incremental reward system. Every time he'd finish a chapter, he'd finish a little mini game, I'd buy him a little something, like a comic book or something, just so he could get that feeling of accomplishment in addition to just finishing a chapter of a book. He would code for 30 minutes a day, five days a week, before he got any screen time. And so screen time became another a reward that he earned himself. And I think that's actually a relevant uh, tool for all of us, right? Like when we're, we're doing uh, information work or work, we often have to time our work and give ourselves rewards, like reference the Pomodoro method, things like that. So uh, anyway, that worked out really well. He finished that. And now he still, by the way, follows that same uh, regime today where he does five days of coding a week for 30 minutes before anything else. Um, Minecraft. So Minecraft, we played it together for what we call daddy time. Daddy time was something that I introduced with uh, both my kids, and they loved it. And daddy time was, uh, we take turns with who's in charge of what. So frequently it's playing video games, sometimes it's movies, but we make sure we get enough time in. And both kids played Minecraft with me on the keyboard, on the LAN. They each had their own keyboard, their own computer. Um, they, the kids still to this day fight over fair distribution of daddy time. My daughter insists that since he's three years older that she deserves more. I don't know. Um, 
So the keyboard was actually, uh, uh, in hindsight, a really important move. My handwriting was horrible when I was in second grade, so they sent me to typing class, and that ended up getting me interested in computers really early. My son got on the keyboard early, and it helped him, and it's helped my daughter too. So that's you know, one of the things I'm going to say is if you're going to play video games with your kids, get them on the keyboard as soon as you can. It's going to help them in so many ways. The second thing that really helped us was Hexit. Hexit is a Minecraft mod. And mods are where you programmers can go in and change the game. And so Hexit was like playing Legend of Zelda mixed with Minecraft. And it was better than Minecraft. So I'd play that with Aiden. And then eventually I said, hey, do you want to make your own mod? He's like, yeah. So I found an uh, app uh, program called Youth Digital, which was recently bought by Apex uh, Learning called Mod Design One. And in Mod Design One, you, you make your own mod. It's uh, kind of basic Java. You're really uh, doing more config, but you get exposed to coding concepts, variables. You're making your own assets in the game. And uh, at the end, you finish a product, your mod, which is reviewed. And uh, Aiden, uh, his first mod was a rainbow-themed mod. That's the rainbow sort of awesomeness you see on the board. And he went on to make a candy cane-themed mod for his sister as a gift afterwards. So at this point, I started to worry a little bit. Like, how much of this was me pushing what I wanted as a father on my son? How much of this was me living my life through him? So I, I said, OK, Aiden, do you like coding? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, you have to explain it to me. You have to sell me on this. Why? He said, well, one, it works for my math brain. Two, I like creating things. And three, dad, it makes me cool. Okay, so obviously I, that was really hard for me to hear because that was not the case when I was younger. Um, but it's actually true how times have changed. I mean, the kids are all playing these video games and the kids who can write their own video games and host the servers are becoming more popular and they're standing out. So other things I've done with both kids is reinforcing training. So uh, the Center for Talent and Development is Northwestern's a la carte education program f for STEM. Uh, it, it's really good. So Aiden is frequently taught by uh, master's level students and professors. Aiden's first course was cool chemistry in first grade. Uh, he then did scratch after he had done the book. So he had a course to bolster his education. He took a course on the Raspberry Pi, which involved him bringing the Raspberry Pi home. Uh, he also did a course on Minecraft architecture, which was really cool, where there was actually no coding, but used Minecraft as a canvas, and then you implemented architecture in the game. Um, my daughter did scratch storytelling and simple machines there. So I can't recommend that program enough and programs like it. Um, ID Tech is a summer camp program, uh, runs for a week, and kids learn various STEM concepts from computer science students there. And at the end, there's also an expo where you show your work. Uh, there, Aiden met older kids and college students, and uh, he started with Minecraft Adventures, which involved very little coding, but then moved on to Python and made a game in Python, Lego Mindstorms, where he learned the EV3 kit, which led into the Lego Robot programming later, C Sharp Unity, and Unreal Blueprints last summer. Every single course that he took there was valuable to him in a different way. The expos were really cool, too, because I could go and see what my kid had learned and what they were proud of. In fact, I forced myself to not ask him too many questions on a daily basis so that he could go off on his own and come back and tell me what he learned. And that worked well. So another thing that's helped with uh, the general education uh, for STEM for my kids has been having tech tools available. So this picture is where Aiden recently Marie kondo his closet. Um, he took all of his old Legos and gave them to his cousin, and I asked him what his vision for his room was. He says, I'm not going to tell you, and I told my wife he's going to have a computer in his closet. And sure enough, he took his Raspberry Pi from his course and moved into his closet and took an old printer and fixed it. Um, so having those tools around is important. My daughter has a Kano kit, which is K-A-N-O, which is a Raspberry Pi, basically build your own computer and it's got a pre-canned OS in it that lets you do kind of graphical design, and she actually uses that to, to make art. Uh, Aiden got a 3D printer, uh, Flash Forge Finder for Christmas a couple years ago. He learned more troubleshooting concepts there. He got into the community in Thingiverse where you share 3D models, uh, and he also started selling his 3D models at school. Um, 
And finally, the EV3. So this was, this was kind of cool. He, because he went to the Northwestern camp and he really got into using the EV3 kit, he decided to spend the allowance he'd been saving for four years for a Lego Death Star, $400, and buy an EV3 kit instead. And I asked him, I'm like, are you sure? Like, are you sure you're making your, the right choice here? Like, you really wanted that. And he said, well, Dad, I'm going to build the Lego Death Star in 16 days, and then I'll be done with it. This EV3 is going to give me more value. And it did. And then, of course, his godfather went and bought him the Lego Death Star. So I guess he also learned you can have your cake and eat it, too. So this is uh, three years ago. This is Aiden three years ago. Um, this is pretty important, the self-paced coding education. This is where Aiden started to branch off into finding some of his own things as well. So after he did the first Minecraft course with Youth Digital, the Mod Design 1, he went on and asked me if he could do Mod Design 2 and then uh, a 3D game programming uh, class with them. And they were good, but then he kind of outgrew it. Around that same time, I took him to Hack for Kids. A friend of mine turned me on to it. And in Hack for Kids, it's an annual conference. It's security focused. You learn things like picking locks, and there's a CTF challenge. But you also have like a tech destruction area where you can take apart old laptops and things like that. Um, there's good representation of boys and girls there. Uh, they also teach like safety education for all the kids, for online safety. It's a pretty good program. Um, the first year, the keynote speaker was this guy, Austin Valensky, who was 16 years old. And at 14, he'd published an app called Impossible Rush that was on the top 10 list on the App Store, beating Spotify. And that inspired Aiden. He said, Dad, I'm going to get my first app in the App Store at 13, which he did. Um, but the important lesson there for me was that Austin, this external mentor, um, was uh, more inspirational to him in some ways than I could be. And so finding new mentors is actually a really important lesson. And you do that through exposure. Code so Austin turned him on to Codecademy. He came home, he tried Codecademy, did some JavaScript. He found it a bit too dry for him. And instead, he had just taken an ID tech course on Udemy with Unity. And he said, Dad, I want to switch off Codecademy to a Udemy course I found on C Sharp with Unity. I want to bolster my education, and I want to write an app. And I know what I want to write. It's going to be, it's going to be a choose-your-own-adventure app, and I'm going to do this course. I'm like, OK. He got halfway through the course, and then he stopped. And he said, Dad, I'm going to stop the course because I know everything I need to know to make my app. And I want to make my product. So what had happened is Youth Digital and ID Tech had taught him the concept of not only application development, but product development. And as soon as he knew what he, knew, what he needed to make his product, he's like, no more of this other stuff. I'm focusing on my product. And he did for about a year and a half, and he wrote the app. And uh, I'll cover that, too. Um, and now he has moved on to a C++ Unreal for his next app, which he says is going to be 3D and multiplayer. We'll see what happens to Fortnite. I don't know. Um, so his app is called, this is the opening screen of Eternal Story. His app, it's free in the App Store. It's only on Apple. Um, this was his idea. He loved Choose Your Own Adventures and decided to have six stories across five different genres. His friend, Harper Jameson, pitched in to write one of them. Um, like I said, C Sharp and Unity. Uh, and uh, at a certain point, we tried to deploy it on the App Store. I don't know if anyone here has tried to deploy an app in the App Store, but it was really hard. And uh, I think it was even harder because he wrote it on C Sharp in Unity on Windows and then had to port it to Unity on the Mac and then port it into uh, Xcode, which then brought a bunch of framework garbage with it. And we were having all these problems. Apple couldn't help us. So I ended up um, getting help from one of my fellow board members, Don Bora of 8-Bit Studios here in Chicago. Uh, who said, hey, why don't you have Aiden come spend an hour with me and my lead deployment engineer? We run into this kind of stuff all the time. I'm sure we'll nail it. And they did in one hour, which was awesome. And it was also a good lesson for Aiden in kind of doing good in the world, where you, know, you, you help other people and they help you, and the tech community is, is really helpful. And you know, he's also gotten into like Stack Overflow, things like that. All right, so I'm going to jump to first LEGO League. This is our team, the Cosmotronic Unicorns. Um, 
First Lego League, I think, is a great program for kids. It's run by uh, First Robotics, and that actually leads into First Tech Challenge, and then um, there's another uh, robot, like metal robot program. But middle school, you start with Lego robots with the EV3 kit I described. They're, uh, they're graded on three different uh, topics, core values themselves, which are basically teamwork, uh, and the, all three of these uh, gradings are equal. Um, they're graded on the robot game itself, where you have two and a half minutes to have your robot complete as many tasks as possible on the table. And then finally, they're graded on a research project that is unrelated to LEGO Robotics. And in the research project, there's a theme of the year, and the kids have to come up with a real-world solution, a hypothetical real-world solution to that theme, some problem in that theme. The first year was Animal Allies that came up with the concept of a bee wash, where uh, the bees would come in and get the, the toxins washed off of them. Um, this year, they won the Global Innovation and the Research Project Award for their concept of a uh, personalized probiotic machine for long-term space travel for curing dysbiosis, um, which is gut biome issues. And um, they met astronauts through doing this. They met the head of microbiology at NASA. And uh, you know, one, of the girl, one of the two girls on the team um, decided she wanted to get more into biology, which was really cool. Aiden also learned some more self-management and organizational techniques. And his first year, he was obviously the lead coder with all that experience. Year two, we, we the coaches, had to start pulling him off, almost physically, um, from, doing, from having hands on keyboard all the time and uh, start teaching others. So uh, here I've got the first year on the left, Aiden and Luke, uh, their first regional. There we were like really middle of the road. The second year was when we started winning. Uh, on the right, Aiden's teaching, um, it's, it's a visual programming language, so, but it's actually, it's pretty engineering forward, so there's, it's, it's good troubleshooting opportunities. Here, the kids are at a laboratory doing research for their project, and also more group coding. And Aiden has really moved into more pairing mode. So let me jump to takeaways. So first of them, first of all, Get involved. Play with your kids. Take them to conferences with you. Show interest in what they're learning. If you get excited, they're going to get more excited. Second, teach them self-study skills. Even if they don't stay in STEM at all, it's going to be useful no matter what they're doing. Like, who knows what college is going to look like when these kids are there? It's all headed towards a la carte. Um, and incremental rewards worked really well for me. Um, we recently. Uh, I ended the incremental rewards recently with, uh, I told him if he got his app in the App Store at 13, I'd buy him something big. And he's like, okay, I want the HTC Vive. So he got a Vive and he's got a VR headset now. And then I said, no more incremental rewards. He's like, okay, I get it. But now he's potentially working on some VR stuff. So that, that might happen. Um, get them exposure. Take them to conferences where they can meet new mentors and new concepts. Get them into camps and clubs and classes. Pay attention to what they say and learn from the classes and help them find new ones. Like, I didn't have a master plan that led to all of this. I started with one thing that he was interested in, and then as he learned more, I helped him find new things, and then he started learning how to fish for himself, and that's what he's doing now. Um, and finally, have a project. So learning to code for the sake of learning to code is really hard. Having a project to aim for makes it so much more fun. Um, like years ago when my employees were learning Python, and I, I, I used to do Perl, um, I taught myself Python. And I wrote the first level, first dungeon of Legend of Zelda as kind of like a self-contained game in text, and it was really fun. And then I had so much fun doing that, I made like a self-contained adventure game, you know? So like having a project makes it so much more fun to learn new languages. So some online resources, these will be slides online. Code.org is basically the hour of code. Makecode.com is Microsoft's uh, uh, attempt at the same thing. Uh, Apex Learning is where uh, the youth digital courses are. Scratch is where Scratch is. And there's a Scratch Junior version for younger kids. I started Isabel at five with Scratch Junior on the uh, iPad. And she was making like animated greeting cards and learning coding con uh, concepts. Khan Academy, everyone knows what Khan Academy is. Uh, Udemy, is, there's a lot of really good courses there. I also have to caution, there's a lot of really bad courses there, so 
to help the kid do the research, at least at first. Udacity has some more advanced courses that are pretty good. Uh, some conferences and camps, Hack for Kids, CTD from Northwestern, and ID Tech. I talked about all three of these. Another thing you could teach them would be organization tools. The book Getting Things Done by David Allen is essentially my workplace Bible, and I've walked through those concepts with Aiden. Anytime you hear about GTD or look at life hacker principles, a lot of them come from this. Um, Evernote is an online naked note-taking app, which is really helpful for keeping reference material. You can also use things like Bear or other note-taking apps. Todoist is an awesome to-do list uh, app that I use and I share with my wife. Um, Aiden's used all of these in different ways to help him with his coding and organizing himself. Uh, the Kano Kit and Super Scratch Programming Adventures are both great things you can buy. Um, before, before I get to questions real quick, I had something I want to try to show you. And this is Aiden and Sasha on my team at their final practice before we went to competition for first Lego League, for those of whom want to see what the robot game looks like. You might not hear the sound. I swear, it doesn't work? Okay, good. Cool. Oh, that right here. I'm sorry to hear that. You have to. Yeah! So I'm on the other end of the table coaching them and doing, like, I'm timing them to say this, two and a half minutes. They're switching attachments now. And they use color sensors to detect different colors on the table and a gyroscopic sensor to precisely execute turns. That was good. That's exactly what he did. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, it's not good. Yes, it is. Wait, no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> And they custom build the attachments. Okay, get the pen ready. Pen. And three attachments. Yeah, I know that. Who's jumping? Uh, uh, close. Close. It was close. We did 16 You rushed. You rushed runs. too much on that one, Aiden. Just take it up. Just take it up right now. You get minus three points every time okay, you grab the robot. The Just don't worry about that. Um, I would have run that one again. Yeah. You, you gave up a lot of points there. Oh, okay. You didn't spend enough time lining that up. Better line up. Ready to pick it up. They have to turn this to green and not too far. Nice, you got green. Push it into white. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it counts. It doesn't matter if it destroys the mission model. It matters that it gets it. Okay. Crater crossing. You guys got time for that. Ah, oh, that thing. Get in the way. Let's just try it. Yeah. Come on, Mindy. Come on. Get it right. Six. Oh my god. Yeah. Five. No, yeah. No. It's over. Did it go over? Yeah. Okay. And that's my presentation.